let's start with the tcp protocol which is the core of uh, transport layer because most of the time we will be using tcp protocol at the transport layer so tcp is full duplex protocol which means that you can send the data and it also allows to receive the data within the same connection so what is the connection here connection basically means that before you send the data there is something called connection you need to establish that connection then only tcp allows to send the, the data so that is why this is also called connection oriented protocol so tcp is also called connection so basically tcp is connection oriented protocol and it is full duplex and it is basically byte oriented protocol which means that it puts the bytes on the on the channel so basically when uh, when there is a sender and whenever there is a receiver and suppose they want to communicate then there will be a logical connection between sender and receiver and we say the tcp is byte oriented which means the tcp sends byte and has count of each byte that tcp is sending so that's why we say the tcp is a byte oriented protocol so let me go to the diagram so suppose that there is a sending process that wants to communicate to some receiving process then it means that it is sending some data through some logical connection and this is basically the phase of connection establishment so we need to first establish the connection which means that there will be some buffers that at uh, sending side and receiving side that they will be allocating for this connection there will be some other bandwidth that they will be allocating so that's why we, we call it connection oriented protocol and in this connection tcp will be putting the HTML bytes right so tcp is connection oriented which means that before you send the data the two tcps establish a logical connection between them and then data is being exchanged and then there is a another phase which is called connection termination so at the third phase you have the connection to be terminated so that's why we call it connection oriented service that is unlike udp so udp was connectionless service I mean UDP was uh, not having these three phases if you want to send some data using the UDP then what you can do you can just uh, fire the data which means like there won't be any connection establishment so you can just uh, fire the data and you do not need to worry about whether the data is even reaching to the receiving process or not I mean it is completely unreliable so why we are using UDP because for some applications we do not want reliable protocols for some application even if the some data is lost that is also okay right so we do not want 100% reliability for some of the application that is why uh, UDP is preferable in some of the cases in some of the cases TCP is preferable. So TCP provides a reliable service which means that it uses an acknowledgement mechanism to check whether the data has been reached safe and sound and we will discuss this feature in the section of error control. So we will be discussing. So basically this is the, um, this is the paragraph I have taken from the book. Uh, so we will be discussing the error control but uh, whatever error control that we, we are going to discuss here is, is basically selective repeat and that mechanism we have already discussed in the data link layer. So I will not go to in the details of selective repeat but I will tell you that how it is using selective repeat. So these are the features of TCP. So what does TCP does? TCP numbers every byte that are being transmitted in a connection. So suppose that there are 500 bytes so i say that this is byte number one suppose maybe maybe like uh, there will be some uh, some starting byte number that is called sequence number suppose that is x then i will say this is x plus one and then i will say this is x plus 499 so every byte is numbered in the tcp and there is something called sequence number and acknowledgement number in the tcp field or in the tcp header so what does the sequence number do so sequence number is basically telling us what is the number of first byte so if i say that sequence number is x or if i say that there are bytes from x to x plus 499 then i will say i will say the sequence number in this case is x why sequence number tells us the byte number of the first byte see after the bytes have been numbered, TCP assigns sequence number to each segment that is being sent. Sequence number is in, in each direction is defined as follows. The sequence number of the first segment. So basically, uh, whenever you are numbering the bytes, you will initialize something called as initial sequence number. So you will say you will generate some number, some random number, and let's suppose that random number is x. So you will say that this is the random number x, 
that we have generated so first byte number is x and then uh, based on the data let's suppose you have 500 bytes so this data is just 500 bytes data then you will say the last byte number is x plus 499 so the first byte number is always generated using some random management and that is called initial sequence number and whatever is your byte number like for every segment like, like if you are sending the next segment then for the next segment you do not need to generate the random number so for the next segment you will be having x plus 500 as the first uh, byte and this will be based on the data let's suppose this is thousand uh, thousand bytes data then you will be having x plus 500 plus 999 something like this but for sending the first packet you will be generating something called initial sequence number okay the sequence number of any other segment is the sequence number of previous segment plus number of bytes that has carried by the previous segment. So sequence number you got it like sequence number for uh, this segment will be x plus 500. Why? Because this is the sequence number for the first byte in this segment. This is the sequence number for first byte in this segment. That is why the sequence number for the first segment is x for sequence number for the second segment is x plus 500. So a sequence number is basically you can say that the byte the first byte number in every segment the first byte number in the segment so sequence number is actually very easy you just need to take the first byte number now to start with how to you know for whenever you are sending the first segment itself now to start with you are going to generate this using initial sequence number or something called as isn i mean this is the short form of initial sequence number and this you generate using some random number generator some random number generator now let's see the acknowledgement number acknowledgement here defines the number of next byte that are that a party is expecting right which means that suppose you have sent some packet or some segment to the receiver now receiver will say that suppose this is from x to x plus 499 right now receiver will say that now receiver is expecting x plus 500 as a next sequence number so receiver will say the ack is or acknowledgement number is x plus 500 see here the acknowledgement number defines the number of next byte the number of next byte the number of next byte that the party is expected to receive so the party is expected to receive x plus 500 so the acknowledgement number will be x plus 500 only and this is very very important in addition the acknowledgement number is cumulative so we will talk about this in more detail in a while but this is very important which means if you have sent let's suppose multiple packets then uh, tcp does not acknowledge every packet instead it it is using the cumulative acknowledgement okay so this line is very important that tcp uses cumulative acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement now let's solve this question this question is saying if a party uses 5643 as an acknowledgement number so what does this mean which means a receiver is saying that okay 5643 is my ACK number acknowledgement number then what does this mean total bytes that have been received till now is 5642 is this true I mean so if you um, if you notice then the party must have received something like uh, some sequence number I do not know what is that sequence number maybe maybe X then x plus something x plus t or whatever but finally from x2 it must have received 5642 right x2 5642 which means whatever packet it has just received the initial initial byte number might be x and the last byte number will be 5642 that's why it is expecting the next byte to be 5643 right so they are saying the total bytes that are received is 5642 need not be true right I mean you do not know what is that initial, initial sequence number if this initial sequence number is let's suppose 1 or or maybe 0 or 1 uh, like we can calculate it so I think this is 1 so if the initial sequence number is 1 then yes then yes total number of bytes that has been received is 5642 but in this case the total number of bytes if the initial sequence number is x that I mean the sequence number that uh, that we just received from the packet that is x then that bytes that we have received is 5642 minus x plus 1 right something like this so bytes that we just have received is 5642 minus x plus 1 if x is 1 then yes the byte that we have received is 5642 the total number of bytes but they are saying the total number of bytes are always 5642 that need not to be true right the party has received all bytes from beginning up to 5642 yes i think this is true why 
because from the beginning i mean whatever is your initial sequence number beginning is initial sequence from initial sequence number so you you must have started with some initial sequence number from isn to some uh, some number and then from that number to some number right and then uh, then from some number to finally let's suppose 5642 so you must have sent multiple packets and and the party saying that they are expecting 5643 as the next packet this means what it means that it does not only have received the last packet which is basically having uh, which is having uh, maybe x as a sequence number then uh, 5642 minus x plus 1 number of bytes it does not have only received the last last packet since the eclomion is commutative so you you will say that if party is saying that 5643 uh, they have received like uh, as an eclomion they are saying that 5643 is the eclomion number then it means that from the beginning they, uh, the party must have received 5642 number like 5642 byte right so b is the correct answer party have received only byte so it does not make any sense and none of these so b is the correct answer right now let me talk about windows in tcp see tcp is a full duplex which means that in one connection itself it allows a sender and receiver both to send the data so there will be basically four windows in the tcp if you remember the tcp uses the selective repeat like i just told you but i have not explained uh, it yet but yes tcp uses the selective repeat so basically there are two windows for selective repeat if you remember right we have discussed this in the data link layer so there are two windows for the selective repeat one is sender window let me just call it sw one is receiver window right there are two windows if it is full duplex then there will be four windows so at the sending side i mean there is nothing sending or nothing nothing receiving side i mean there will be client or server and client can send the data and can, client can also receive the data so here also you will be having receiver window and here also you will be having sender window so there are four windows that we have in the tcp now let me talk about the sending window i mean either this window or this window does not matter both are the sending window so let me just talk about the sending window so in the sending window this is just same as selective repeat protocol which means there will be uh, some outstanding bytes like uh, for this byte i have not received the acknowledgement and we have uh, like we have sent these many bytes i have not received the acknowledgement till this byte and the next byte that i am expecting to send is 261 so this is um, very basic which means that uh, uh, if i receive the acknowledgement for let's suppose this byte then i will just shift or slide my window right and i will send multiple bytes i mean uh, i will i will send based on the window so if the window is covering this much so that that will be covered in the in the subsequent uh, slides so that uh, how to send the data i mean how to decide uh, congestion control and flow control these things but here i just want to tell you the sending window so sending window is very simple it has just two pointers like till what point i have received the acknowledgement and what is the next expected by to be sent once i receive the acknowledgement for uh, some segment then i will shift the slide and i will i will slide the window and i will send multiple segments or one segment or more segment depending on the acknowledgement that we are receiving so this was the sending window now we have the receiving window in the receiving window we have these two sections now if you notice that this is only receiving window and this complete thing is called as allocated buffer so this is important here which means at the receiving side i allocate some buffer okay this is the buffer that i allocate and then i say that if let's suppose the sender has sent some data and the data is this much okay i have i have uh, covered let's suppose uh, this much portion of the buffer and then my receiving window which means i am now allowed or i am i have i have the capacity which is this much only so this is the receiving window and complete thing is the buffer what does this mean is that this is the data that i am waiting for the application process to consume so i am waiting for the application layer to consume this data is not like that whole thing i can treat as a um, as a receiving window at, at the next time so it it won't be the case that i can treat the whole thing as a receiving window i will say that the complete thing is a buffer i have received this much i am waiting for the application uh, application process to uh, consume this data once the data is consumed then then my uh, receiving window will get Will uh, will get in the uh, in large right, which means this pointer will get shifted to the left. Which means let's suppose this data, some of the portion of the data get consumed, then I will just shift this pointer. Then I will say my buffer is now this much, maybe this much. So only this data is left to consume. Now my receiving window has been increased. So receiving window maximum size could be buffer only. Right? Now at the receiving side, we have allocated a buffer. 
and out of which out of which there is some portion which is a receiving window so here here we have two pointers one that is uh, that is pointing to the byte for which i am waiting for the application process to consume and another one is the byte number for which i am expecting to be received right so once let's suppose 201 to uh, let's suppose 250 bytes get consumed then i will just i will just uh, shift this uh, this 250 to 260 here and then i will say that my new buffer is this so 250 to 260 something like that and then this is completely a receiving window okay now let's talk about the tcp header in the tcp header there are multiple fields and we will talk about every field in detail now if you look at this header then each row is having four byte or 32 bits right this is 31 from i think this should be from 0 to 31 so this is 0 and this is 31 so from 0 to 31 i have 32 bits right which means four bytes so this is this is four byte 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 which means i have 20 bytes as a fixed header 20 bytes is a fixed header and then i also have options up to the 40 bytes so again this is same as ip header i mean in the in terms of the length it is same as ip header which is from 22 if I, options are 40 which means 60 bytes it can range so header length could be from 20 to 60 bytes now header has multiple fields and along with there is something called option so let's talk about these fields one by one one is source port address now source port address is used to communicate within the host like which process is running this particular program so suppose that uh, within the host this is the process so this is host and within this host this process has made some request using tcp so this source post number is basically able to identify which process has made some request if there is some let's suppose uh, if i'm sending some data or i'm receiving some data then the source and destination port numbers are useful which are very clear and these are 16 bit um, ports which means the maximum value and minimum value we can calculate from 0 to 2 power 16 minus 1 and these are the number of ports that we have and out of them some of some of the ports are well defined which means like on which only these kind of services can run some of the ports that we can use by um, like user can define by their own now we have sequence number and acknowledgement number these two are very important see these two are very easy and now these two are very important and uh, then we will be going to other details so let's let me first talk about the sequence number now if you see the sequence number if you remember that we have talked about sequence number which was like this if the first byte number in that segment that segment could be the first segment or could be the uh, some middle segment so the, uh, the first byte number is x then sequence number is also x right so let me write sequence number is also x it does not depend on the last byte number or the size of this segment it just says that okay what is the first byte number that is equal to the sequence number so this 32 bit field that define number assigned to the first byte of the data contained in the segment right now during the connection establishment phase that we will talk a little uh, little in a while each party uses a random number generator that that creates this initial sequence number which means for the first segment only so let's suppose i want to i want to send some data from client to server and whenever there is a first segment for the first segment only i will be using isn and that is generated by some random number generator right and suppose this party also wants to send some data then this will also use some random number generator and uh, for each direction these random number generators are different which means it could be x this could be y so i hope you got it and these things will get uh, more clear when we will take many examples like i will be taking uh, six seven examples just to uh, make you understand that you have uh, completely got the idea of tcp how the exchange of data is happening in the tcp next field is acknowledgement number and this field is basically telling you that what is the expected number that the party uh, party is expecting to receive which means suppose that we have sent from x to x plus again 499 then party is expecting to receive next x plus 500 right 
So this this is a 32 bit field that defines the byte number that receiver of the segment is expecting to receive from another party. Now acknowledgement and data can be piggyback. Piggyback means what? That see this is a full duplex right. So whenever you you receive some data, let's suppose you receive some data, and you you have two options. I mean here either you want to send the data or you do not want to send the data. Which means if you want to send the data. Or, or let's suppose you do not want to send the data, but anyhow you have to send the acknowledgement, right? So if you are only sending the acknowledgement, then this is not piggybacked. But if you are also, once the data is received, and you you also want to send some data, then this acknowledgement is called piggyback, which means that within the data only you can also send the acknowledgement, which is very nice feature. You do not need to create uh, create uh, another uh, packet or another header for the acknowledgement within the data TCP header only. So this TCP header is able to contain two things: the information about the packet and also the information about the acknowledgement. So it can contain the two things at the same time, right? Because it supports the full duplex. So if there is some data to send, then you can basically send the acknowledgement with the data itself. And this acknowledgement is called piggyback acknowledgement. Piggyback acknowledgement, right? So acknowledgement and data can be uh, can be sent together using the piggyback mechanism. So how we will actually do it? That I will take many examples, right? Now this uh, like sequence number, I hope that is clear. That is just the first byte number in the uh, in the segment. Acknowledgement number is just a next byte number that uh, the receiver is expecting to receive. So these two fields are clear. Header length is exactly same as the IP header length, which means like uh, if I have 20 to 60 bytes, I like header, then the header length will be, if I have 20 bytes, the header length will be 5. If I have 60 bytes, the header length will be 50, which means here also we have a scaling of 4. Just as IP header, right? Same as IP header. Now these 6 bits are reserved, which means these are not being used. And now we have some flags. These are some flag bits URG, ACK, PSH, RST, SYN, and FIN. So let me just talk about these flag bits. See here, I have some couple of flags which are six bits flags. And first flag is URG flag. So let me let me just skip this URG and PSH flag. I will talk about in, in a while. Let me just skip that. Let me just talk about ACK, SYN, and FIN. These three flags first. So ACK flag means that if this flag is set if this is one then it means that you have some acknowledgement uh, acknowledgement number here right so it means that this acknowledgement number is valid okay now you can guess that how we are using the piggyback so what we will be doing whenever we are sending some data and uh, this header will be created based on the data then i will do what just to put the put the acknowledgement i will just set this ACK flag i will say okay let it be one and then I will I will uh, append some uh, I will just create or I will just uh, write some acknowledgement number here. That's how I can send the acknowledgement using the data, right? It is not affecting the data, which me which means this flag is basically telling me whether this header is containing the acknowledgement number is valid or it is not valid. Which means should I be making use of this acknowledgement number or should I not be making use of this acknowledgement number? So that's why we use this flag. Now there is one flag that is RST. That flag is uh, quite dangerous in the sense that um, if that flag is 1, then that uh, connection has to be reset. So if RST is 1, then connection has to be reset. And if RST is 1, basically there is something wrong with the connection that receiver uh, or sender is saying that connection has to be reset. So there is something wrong. And this uh, this is basically uh, a flag to show that something wrong has happened. Now another flag is SYN. This flag is used only for first packet basically. It is used only for first packet. And what does this SYN, SYN means? SYN means synchronization. Which means that this is the first packet and I have sent this packet for the synchronization. So that uh, that flag is being used in the connection establishment phase. So whenever we want to send some data, then there is first phase that is called the connection establishment phase. That is basically three-way handshaking that we send some data. 
we receive the acknowledgement then uh, then we send the acknowledgement so like uh, we will discuss it but i'm just telling you in the brief this is sin plus ack this is ack so there is a connection establishing phase that i will be discussing a uh, little later so this sin is set for only the first packet from the sender and this sin is set because this is the first packet from the receiver in these two packets only the sin is set otherwise the sin will not be set so sin is the sin is used for the synchronization now we have the next flag which is fin so fin means finish or terminate and th if this is one then we we ask for the termination and this is set only for last packet only for last packet see i have written everything on the next slide that is why i have not uh, written uh, i mean in the very structured form because i know that there everything is in the next slide see here sin is one bit that is used to synchronize sequence number only the first packet sent from each end should you have this flag fin is the last packet from the sender so if the sender is saying that fin is set which means now sender doesn't want to send any data okay rst is used for the reset uh, reset connection and ack indicates that acknowledgement field is significant which means there is some valid acknowledgement that i have and all packets after initial uh, sin packet sent by the client should have this flex set which means that whenever like uh, let's suppose uh, i'm i'm using some terminology which is uh, client and server now whenever uh, after uh, the first packet which is sin only then it will send sin plus ack which means it wants to communicate uh, with the with the server and then uh, whenever uh, that is the case then after it all the packets should be having this ack as one which means my acknowledgement is valid because it is basically asking to uh, send uh, data from the server so the client is requesting from the server which means client needs to acknowledge for the every other packet so server will keep on sending the packets and client need to acknowledge the packets right now there is there are two fields which are uh, urg and pss that we have not discussed yet so let let's discuss these two fields so let me first discuss the pss flag so if let's suppose the pss is one then what does this mean it means that you remember that i have talked about this um, uh, receiving uh, receiving window right this receiving window is having some buffer and then uh, that uh, some part of the buffer is basically uh, basically that i have received from the um, from the process uh, received from the sender but the application process has not consumed that yet right now pss is helpful here suppose that there is a sender and there is a receiver and i want to send some data to this receiver but somehow i know that i i want basically this data to be sent this application process to as soon as possible basically i do not want receiver to wait for something wait for the application process to ask for the data basically i just want to push this data Are you getting me so basically sender 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 wants not the receiver basically sender wants to push the data to application process as soon as possible then what does it do it basically set this uh, flag to be one and then it says that do not wait for the application process just push this data to the application process that's how this push is being used this ps pss is being used so pss is set by uh, set by the sender right so sender sets it sender sets this flag to tell that okay just push the data to the application process and receiver make use of this flag so receiver just make use of this flag right it it make use of the flag which means that it sees that okay pss is one which means it should immediately push the data to the application process without waiting for the application process to ask for the data okay. that's how P pss flag or uh, pushing the data works now there is another flag that is urg flag if urg set let's suppose i say that urg is one then what does this mean 
it means that this urgent pointer field is valid this is significant if urg said it means that it is significant see here indicates that urgent pointer uh, urgent pointer field is significant which means what that in the urgent pointer field so let's suppose this is the tcp header and there is a field called urgent pointer if i set this urg flag then i will say that urgent pointer field is valid and what does this urgent pointer field does right so let's suppose this number is 5000 then it means that the data that i am sending to you let's suppose i am sending this data and this is the first byte of the data and this is the last byte of the data then it says that from the first byte till 5000th byte so this is the 5000th byte this data is urgent data what does this mean so it does not mean that uh, this data is out of order or something like that i mean uh, this data is priority data or should be delivered out of order i mean uh, whenever whenever uh, it receives it receives to uh, receives to the receiver then it does not mean that whenever this packet arrives so let's suppose this is the buffer and receiver is waiting for the dish data it does not mean that this uh, this packet should be immediately pushed to the uh, application process without without waiting for the application process to consume the remaining data it does not mean this it only means that this data is having some importance and this data should be treated with some special priority so why like what does this mean of urgent it means from the sender side again so sender will do what let's suppose sender needs to send some urgent data then what it, it will do it will this is your usual segment the sender wants to send then a sender will append the append the urgent data urgent data to the usual segment and it will call the whole thing as a segment right so sender at the sender side it will append the urgent urgent data to the segment that it is sending to receiver so sender data appends the urgent data to the usual segment and call the whole thing as a segment and then it sends and this urgent pointer field is basically helping us to tell that from where to where we have appended the urgent data so see here it is important to mention that tcp urgent data is neither the priority data nor uh, nor an out of band data that some people think that this is a, this is some data that uh, that is having some priority and should be delivered out of order it is not the case so the tcp uh, the sending tcp creates a segment and insert the urgent data at the beginning of the segment so which means the, there is a user segment and at the beginning of that user segment it appends some uh, some urgent data that is from the sender side that is from the sender side and once this data gets delivered to the uh, receiver then receiver will say that okay let me let me just check that okay whether this is urgent data or not if this is urgent data then i will i will give it is a special priority a special uh, not priority a special a special importance basically and i will i will treat this as urgent data but it does not mean that i am delivering this out of order so now we will discuss about the connection establishment phase which is very important phase for the tcp connection establishment and connection termination phase and this is about the header of tcp now as you notice there are two fields that are remaining which one with checksum checksum is basically 16 bit here and the calculation of checksum is same as that i, I have shown you earlier but here in the tcp checksum or udp uh, if you remember there was also checksum at the udp then they use um, some part of the ip header also and that's what is not important so i'm not going to tell tell you about it so they use some part of ip header and and then they calculate the whole checksum now in the options let me uh, talk about the options in the options there are multiple options that we have for the tcp uh, for the tcp header one is window so if you if you notice here there is a window size in the tcp header okay let me talk about this window size what does this window size mean that suppose i am saying that window size is let's suppose 1000 bytes then what does this mean it means that if you want to send me some data if you want to send me some data then as a receiver window so this is always a receiver window receiver window right rwnd is basically receiver window short form so if you want to send me some data then i have capacity only for the thousand bytes which means 
at the sending side also so i mean there is nothing sending or nothing then nothing receiving because this is a full duplex connection but i am just saying you that if it is sending then it will also receive some data right because it's a full duplex so this window size is used for the receiver window which means at the sending side you have the receiver window also so there is there will be a buffer in the buffer let's suppose this data is arrived and you are waiting for this data and let's suppose this size is 1000 bytes then you will say that in the receiving portion i have that i have the size of 1000 bytes so if you want to send me some data then please do not send more than 1000 bytes this is how receiving window is being used so that is being advertised using this window size right so this window size tells the receiving window receiving window at the sender side so basically sender is sending this uh, this packet to tell that if you want to some send some data then i have this as a receiving window so this window size tells us the receiving window but sometimes what happens you have you have a huge buffer and huge receiving window that is possible then what you do that that is not suppose possible to um, pos possible to write in this um, uh, just a 16 bits then what you do there is some field in the option that is for 14 bits then using those 14 bits you can also tell like uh, you can basically tell that see i am not able to express my size which is beyond 16 bits so using these 14 bits you can you make use of these 14 bits and then the there will be total 30 bits and you can basically say that my size is up to 2 power 30 minus 1 so you can use some of the bits from the um, uh, options and there are 14 bits that are allocated for window right so basically these options are not important but i am just telling you and there is one other option that is ma maximum segment size so this option is being used in the connection establishment phase generally and this is just to tell that okay my uh, my maximum segment size is this and your maximum size like your receiver will say that my maximum size is this so mss is being advertised at the options from like uh, in the phase of connection establishment so in the connection connection establishment generally we use the mss to tell what is the mss for receiving uh, receiving side and what is the mss for the sending side and that are um, being used in the options like i mean there are there are many many other fields that are in options but uh, that are not important even these two are not much important but i just told you so in options like generally we have window we have mss these are much popular rather than other option field I hope you got it so every field of this header is clear now let's move to the connection establishment phase